views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everyone. Welcome to the Empowered Self Series with my friend, colleague, co-host, Dr. Friedman Schaub. I love, love these shows we get to do together. So much to talk about, the Empowered Self Series. Um, how to, I love this. You ready? How to stay calm and centered in a world of terror. This is so important. That's even and possible? He, uh, it, it, he's, we're going to get some schooling on oh, this okay. today. We're I'm going to stay put then. I'm not going anywhere. I'm telling you. Well, <laughs> right. Dr. Friedman also is the host of Empowerment Radio. He's an award-winning author. Uh, he helps people all over the world how to deal with fear and anxiety. And what does it mean to thrive in a world that may seem unsafe? Uh, and, you know, many people say, you know, the world doesn't seem unsafe. Yet, uh, we watch what happens, where we go, where we put our children. We watch how we take that step. We don't go down that street. We don't go on that car. We don't go to that concert that we would normally go to. We don't do any of the above. And yet we say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all good. Uh, and the question really is, are we good? The Fear and Anxiety Solution uh, is a fabulous book that Dr. Friedman Schaub has put together. His journey is something that we've talked about many times. You know, along the way, he made a decision uh, about what he wanted his life to be about and the direction. And how did he do that when everyone perhaps in his life at the time said, wait, no, that's not what you're going to do. Friedman that's and I, I I can imagine myself sitting at the table and and just being part of this conversation because I too had that conversation in my family a European family my dad telling me no you're not going to go to school you're not going to study music you're not going to do this you're going to you're going to get married and you're going to have children and you're going to just shut up and do it and that is not what happened but today it's why Dr. Friedman Shaw uh, comes out in the world works with people all over the globe, fabulous radio show, and an amazing book is taking on this topic. Dr. Friedman, thank you for joining me here today. My gosh, what a topic. Yeah, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, we probably have most of us thought about after the recent events, and it's not only Paris, things happened in Lebanon, terrorist attacks happened in Turkey, and Egypt, I mean, you know, in the last uh, six to eight weeks, the, the world was literally rattled with all of this uh, news on that what, uh, you know, really shook us up and makes us believe in many ways that no, we are not living in a safe world anymore. It's definitely something that right now is run by the fear of terrorism. And, uh, and that was certainly alive already at... Uh, after the events of 9-11, but now many that went through the trauma of 9-11 and, and felt shocked and felt uh, really unsafe after that, certainly are reminded of that. And maybe their fears are coming back and their sense of having to make their world smaller is just growing again. And, and I just want to help to understand that we have choices on how to deal with this and how to actually recognize 
that there are things we can do to feel more calm and centered and that anxiety actually doesn't keep us safe and it doesn't increase our awareness. It's a complete misnomer and a misunderstanding. And, and those are the things we want to talk about. Well, I think that for what we're saying here today is that, you know, we have this, this constrictive thing that happens within us. And, and I know you've talked about this before. It may vary person to person, but it stops us from truly living a life that we want. Whether it's like I said, right, you know, Dr. Friedman, whether it is whether I get in my car and I drive in traffic over the weekend or I don't because I'm so afraid to do that. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about our reactions, our reactions. I was at a very early meeting this morning and I knew we were going to talk about this today. And I was struck by the group. There was a group of of gentlemen that had got got together for coffee, right? Right that were part mm-hmm. of another group, not part of my group, got together. Mm-hmm. And their getting together was simply to talk about the news, world events, to talk about the attacks. To t- That's what they got together to talk mm-hmm. about. And I had to get up. I couldn't sit there. So the question is, is there something wrong with me for not wanting to listen? Uh, no, certainly not, because this is one of the things that uh, – makes us anxious see the anxiety has nothing to do with logic because people in seattle for example we all know the big one the earthquake is around the corner it's going to happen and when it's going to happen statistics say probably 13 to 20 uh, thousand people going to die But does anyone actually pack their stuff and leave? Does anyone say, no, I shouldn't buy a house? I shouldn't even plant a tree? No, we all feel like, no, this is nature and nothing has happened in so long. Nothing will happen again. So that is one thing that we are doing. We are kind of, you know, putting our fears aside and just saying it's going to be okay because there is no evidence there in the moment that we have to feel any different. Of course, scientists would disagree with that, but for us, there is no evidence right in front of us. But when we turn on the news, every five minutes, there is some talk, some breaking news, something about these terrorist attacks, and and it makes us feel that this is how the entire world looks like. So the mind distorts this as, oh my God, we are really living in this war zone and takes everything as if it's right around the corner, although all those things happen in different countries, different continents, and it's still something the mind feels as right now, right in front of us, right here, and that's a distortion that watching TV, talking about it, making it bigger, doesn't really help us to feel better. So I agree with you. I would limit the information you're taking, whether it's from other people, from the news, from the newspaper, just also in small doses. Well, you know, I, I, I wanted to, to ask you, I mean, you know, we are looking at our lives and people are they're tr- excited right now, at least here in the United States. There are a lot of people mm-hmm. excited. They're traveling. It's one of the they, – we've got a tra- travel alert or something. I don't know what it's called. Maybe Benny can fill me in. Some kind of travel thing. Like it's, it's like, oh, my gosh. So many people are traveling, and, and mm-hmm. they're saying, we haven't done that in years. We haven't done that in years. Um, mm-hmm. And, the, you know, the question is, are we, uh, are we stepping out now and stepping out and looking at our lives in a bigger way? Are we looking at maybe doing some things we haven't done for a while, or um, are we still angry? Are we still afraid? Well, I think that's a it's a very interesting uh, phenomenon which I wasn't aware of because what I see is the contrary that people mm-hmm. are when they are feeling anxious and feeling afraid actually more closing in on themselves. They are more isolating themselves. They are more trying themselves to, you know, not leave the safety of their home or not travel or not reach out because I think this is actually a a wonderful uh, sign if people say, well, this is a time not to postpone the visit of the family. Let's just do it. Who knows what's going to happen? So actually expanding rather than contracting, I think that's very positive. I love it. Now, let's talk about expanding. 
you did something like that yourself. Brand new website, you know, uh, rate hosting a radio show. What does expanding look like, even for folks that life is pretty good? I mean, there's this idea that someone said to me a long time ago about complacency and how mm-hmm. complacency has its energy of its own. And to some people, that is also a sign of being afraid. Is it? Or what is complacency? Well, I think complacency is, you know, when you have a certain you know, level of comfort that just makes you feel every day okay. There is no challenge. There is no risk taking. There is no trying something new. You're kind of in a comfortable routine and you're cruising along and there is not necessarily anything wrong with it if it doesn't stay like this for the rest of your life. Uh, I believe we are creatures uh, that need, like everything in nature, ultimately to grow and evolve. I mean, a plant, an animal, if they don't grow, evolve, they die. And so we do have the same responsibility. And so getting out of complacency could mean simple things, could mean trying something new. It could also mean mm-hmm. trying something new internally. I talked to someone today and it was interesting because guy, very successful, someone who I really would say has in many ways reached so many of his goals and uh, is, an, is an outstanding person, but he hasn't reached his children. Mm-hmm. He hasn't reached them on an emotional level so when he recently talked with one of his kids you know the kid said you know if i have an emotional problem i gonna go to the counselor in school because you know you're not really there you don't really have time you're too busy so getting out of the complacency could be just like to take time to open up and to have more uh, connections on an emotional level that is as important as traveling to an exotic place or finding a new hobby or writing a book. I love it. Uh, For those of you out there, today's show, Dr. Friedman Chow, the Empower Itself series, uh, how to stay calm and centered in a world of terror. When we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, anger. What is that? Uh, You know, and others being afraid. Is that a conscious level of being that we are operating from or is it our subconscious? subconscious mind let's take a short break we'll be right back and for those of you out there check it out the fear and anxiety solution.com the fear and anxiety solution dr shab has got an amazing webinar we'll talk to you about when we come back stay tuned we'll be right back birds flying high you know how i feel sun in the sky You know how I feel Breeze drifting on by You know how I feel The preceding audio was via a Skype call. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. Negative self-talk plays a major role in how we create fear and anxiety. You're probably familiar with that worried, insecure, or critical voice that rises from somewhere deep inside, often at the most inopportune moments. You don't seem to choose the limiting, anxiety-triggering, or self-sabotaging thoughts, nor do you seem to be in control of them. Over the years, I've found that rather than ignoring or suppressing these negative thoughts, what works best is to redirect the mind with at least three counterbalancing arguments that shed light on the opposite, positive points of view. For example, if your negative thought was something bad will happen, counterbalances could be right now I'm okay. There have been many times I was worried and everything turned out well. I have the strengths and abilities to handle anything that comes my way. Positive counterbalancing is training your mind to search for and find uplifting and empowering perspectives for any given situation. 
Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com. Living Kabbalah, experience the fruits of the tree of life. In this 10-month ascension program, Kabbalah unlocks the potential of your own divine nature to know and accomplish your unique purpose in life. Get ready for real and lasting change. Enroll now for this 10-month ascension program starting January 30th through 31st. Visit 10thhouse.org. That's 10thhouse.org today to learn more. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Do you often find yourself feeling overwhelmed, overworked, or exhausted? Are you ready to embrace a life filled with more love, connection, and joy? Best of the month list and five star rated on Amazon, Conscious Being by author TJ Woodward will awaken you to your true nature. To learn more about how to get your copy of Conscious Being, visit ConsciousBeingBook.com today. The following audio is via a Skype call. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Yeah, everybody. Welcome back. The Empowered Self Series with Dr. Friedman Schaub, my co-host, How to Stay Calm and Centered in a World of Terror. And, you know, terror is defined at many, many levels for people, and it's defined in that way differently. You know, whether it's vacations of getting canceled or grief in a sense of hopelessness. Um, what is it that happens? You know, why are some so angry, others afraid? Is it something that we are aware of? Before we talk about this, Dr. Friedman, can we take a minute and talk about the upcoming Fear and Anxiety webinar that you, you're putting on? Yeah, it's actually a free webinar that happens on Saturday, December 5th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Standard Time. And um, it's a webinar that is about breaking through fear and anxiety and it will just help you to a understand more what is actually my fear and anxiety about where does it come from and more importantly what can I do to overcome it and not feel like that it actually has to hold me hostage for the rest of my life so what can I do to no longer have to be afraid of my own anxiety and that is what the webinar is going to teach you. It teaches you tools and gives you insights that immediately will make an impact on how you're dealing with fear and anxiety. And uh, all you need to do is just send us an email at info at thefearandanxietysolution.com and uh, you will get a uh, link that lets you sign up for the webinar and uh, we'll talk then on the 5th. Um, I love this because, you know, first of all, we're talking about having a conversation uh, on this before um, the holiday season, you know, just comes through and is right in the middle of our faces. And it's about stepping back for a minute and getting some relief. And that's the thing that um, I think is so important about the work you do. You know, you, you help people provide solutions in areas of their lives a that they probably didn't think that would ever be possible and then and then the other part of this dr friedman is that you know people may not know that they're afraid or anxious but they can't get unstuck 
they're mm-hmm. they're just going like the dog with the ch- tail chasing thing around and round and they'll be the first to say you know dr friedman i'm not afraid I, i'm not right. anxious i don't have any right. resentment yeah and you know that's definitely one mechanism to just make it through life to shut down your awareness on your feelings and uh, in some ways you know this is one thing that i feel in times like we are now where the world seems to be less safe than before that feelings come up that we may have ignored for a long time feelings may rise to the surface that have been there but somehow we were successfully stuffing them down so there is an opportunity also for us to really recognize and deal with the feelings that we are facing and and for many people that have been ignoring their feelings and they would say oh, i'm fine the first reaction they have is anger and why because anger still feels somewhat powerful it feels still somewhat you know okay we can with anger lash out beat up send rockets whatever just to make us feel better and it's basically when we really look at it, a shield that prevents us from feeling the deeper emotions like sadness, like despair, like fear, like uh, insecurity. Anger is usually what people feel when they're too afraid of their own vulnerabilities. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people react with anger right now and they say, well, anyone with a turban and a beard is a terrorist, send them home and let's not take the refugees into our country they should just do whatever i mean that kind of angry reaction is basically making us more inhuman and unfortunately is not the resolution yeah uh and you know it's so interesting that we're talking about this how quick we are to go to a solution that may or may not even address what some people feel the problem is um but it seems like it is the place that we go because even that solution is so fear-driven. What do you say about the notion that fear begets fear? Well, I think there's definitely truth to that, for sure. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we have, you know, clear evidence how what happened after September 11 and then all of a sudden, you know, the Iraq war started and... uh, you know, basically the lashing out to have some reaction in the end didn't make any feel one feel better and didn't the world, you know, make any safer. But that's exactly what we have to learn now from all of this, you know, that we cannot let our anger and our feelings of powerlessness get the best of us and create actually from the fear-driven anger even more turmoil in our own lives and in the lives of you know, millions and billions of other people in the world. Mm. Um, I know that there have been times in my life, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, here recently even, where I could feel myself um, being afraid, right? Mm -hmm. And I think fear shows up differently for different people. How does fear uh, and terror, uh, how does this show up in the way we act? Uh, as as humans you know somebody listening to the show may be thinking to themselves you know i'm calm i know how to stay calm i know how to stay centered and yet then we go off and all of a sudden we react to something in a certain way how does this show up in life especially around these upcoming holiday stressors which show up maybe just once a year (laughs) Well, I think, you know, for many people, fear is not necessarily something they feel comfortably feeling. And so we try to ignore the emotion, although she, the emotion is still there. I mean, we all know that fear is when we are feeling tense, when we are breathing fast, when our heart is beating fast, when our mind is racing a million miles an hour. That's something we know, and that's what often people call a panic attack or, you know, just a, an anxiety attack. But there is the undercurrent, the undercurrent of fear that is, you know, like the refrigerator noise. It's there, but somehow we don't really know it's there, but we are acting accordingly. And, you know, it depends on the person. Some people, when they do have this undercurrent of fear that becomes heightened, 
are more the avoiders then. And they say, well, you know, let's just cancel this trip to Paris next year, even though it was our 25th year anniversary. Let's not just, you know, go out into crowds. Let's just, you know, make our lives a little bit more controllable and small, which is an avoidance reaction. And it all comes from saying, well, it makes logical sense. But ultimately, it's fear-driven. Ultimately, there's something inside that says the world is not safe. And others go into the control mode. Oh. And they say more like, okay, I need now to be more in control of my circumstances, more in control of other people, more in control of you know what happens and what I'm doing. And those people often are a little bit more the angry and frustrated ones and uh, and those are people that, you know, may buy guns now. Or these are the people that may say, like, you know, I'm going to have to be really informed 24-7 and sit in front of Fox News and make sure that I know everything and know also, you know, tell the police as soon as I notice anything. And so they go more into the, you know, attack defense mode. And, and that is more their way of mm. coping. But it's still fear-driven. It's still something that ultimately isn't sustainable and certainly not healthy. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes, uh, Dr. Friedman, we don't even know we're doing it. I mean, and I want to talk with you about that when we come back from break. You know, how is it that we could recognize the fear in, in, in ourselves? How do we recognize that? And then what is it with the sense of, a sense of things, our view of the world that seems so real, that seems like this unsafe place that is so real. It is really unsafe. What is it about that that will help us see through whether or not that's truly, truly the world we live in? And even if it is, what can we do to put things in perspective and stay calm during challenging times? Today, Empowerment Radio, Dr. Friedman Chaub, um, we're going to be, um, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll let you know again about his upcoming webinar, how you can find out more about it. And you can go to thefearandanxietysolution.com. A fabulous website, lots of information there. Any show that uh, he's ever done, boom, there we go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. When you need me, call my name. Because without you, my life just wouldn't be the same. The preceding audio was via a Skype call. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Has asthma or allergies got you singing the raspy blues? Allergy and Asthma Networks is the nation's premier nonprofit patient centered network of doctors, caregivers, patients, and healthcare professionals who are dedicated to ending death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions. Join President and CEO Tanya Winders each month on the Dr. Pat Show to learn more and visit allergyasthmanetwork.org today. Breathe better together with Allergy and Asthma Network. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones? Travel the world? Live spontaneously? Get ready, because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Vasily and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for a life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. 
Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. The following audio is via a Skype call. If you want me, I'm sunny skies or rain. When you need me, just call my name. Wow, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. And the name to call is Dr. Friedman Schaub, for sure. You know, in these times or times when life is getting a little bit, you know, it's getting a little bit uncomfortable for you or a lot uncomfortable, uh, Dr. Friedman works with people all over the world. You can go to the fearandanxietysolution.com and find out more about it. Now, um, he has got a fabulous fear and anxiety free webinar coming up on uh, December 5th. Uh, and uh, you can email him at info at the fear and anxiety solution.com. But tell us a little bit about this webinar, if you could, before we jump in to what it means to have a different perspective. Tell us a little bit about this webinar for people, Dr. Friedman. You know, a lot of the people that have fear and anxiety just feel so overwhelmed by the emotion that all they want is just to get rid of it. They, they just feel like I want to somehow have relief and I don't want to feel this anymore and so they try to ignore it they take medication they medicate themselves and and nothing really has a, a long-term effect because you know ultimately the fear and anxiety is something that comes from within and has a reason to be there mm-hmm. and what is that reason and how do we find the root causes of this fear and anxiety and how do we understand what actually this fear and anxiety is trying to tell us that is what this webinar is all about and it teaches you just how to communicate with the source of your fear and anxiety which is your subconscious mind it teaches you how to stop the anxiety from ramping up when you notice okay i'm going down into this anxiety spiral and it teaches you also on how to really find out what you can do in the moment when you do feel anxiety is already overwhelming to you how to get out of that how to get out of the throngs of this anxiety so it's a it's a definitely very useful and helpful free webinar and uh, i would love for you to participate and uh, join me on december 5th uh, and you know it's so important because i think we are uh, you know it's it's interesting we're talking about we're talking about this today because one of the things i've noticed over my lifetime is that I, I wish I could say that there was a major event uh, in my life that, you know, put me over the edge. I think 9-11 came pretty close uh, for me because I grew up in that city. Um, but it's more like a slow kind of thing, right? You know, for, for a lot of people, it's slow, almost to the point where you don't really know that you know, from my perspective, I'm just doing what I've always done. When other people look, they say, wow, you just don't get out as much as you used to, or you don't do Mm -hmm. this as much. Can you talk about how how that subconscious mind works on us in that way? Uh, And it shapes, or maybe even as you say, distorts our reality, and we don't even know it sometimes. Well, it does distort our reality for sure, because, you know, it, it highlights everything that potentially can cause us to have danger. Now, you know, the subconscious is basically, uh, you know, the the artist of the mind because the subconscious can just make everything feel alive and real and exciting and also scary. So 
when we watch a movie, I mean, everyone is excited about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Well, Star Wars is absolutely a movie. And I know that uh, a lot of people are just by the first moment when the music comes on, already are there and, you know, looking forward to see Han Solo and all the other crew. Because that's the fun of it. That's what the subconscious does. It doesn't tell us this is ketchup and uh, this is just, you know, a wonderful mask. This isn't real. No, the subconscious says, okay, I'll let you go into this world and you can just fly around and have a lot of fun. And, and that's why we enjoy books. That's why we enjoy daydreaming. And that's why we get scared when we watch the news. Because similar to that, the subconscious says, okay, I'll put you to Paris right now. And I'm going to have you dodge bullets of terrorists and I'm going to make you feel how they are feeling because that's what the subconscious does. It takes everything very literally and very personally and is very real. And so we have to be also aware that we have a responsibility over our subconscious mind to reel our subconscious mind back and put things into perspective and also feed our subconscious mind with the information and the mental nutrition that actually makes us feel good versus makes us feel scared. And that's something that we can do consciously, like you not wanting to watch TV or searching for the good news on the news or on the internet and looking for the things that actually are uplifting. You know, like in Paris, there were people that were spontaneously when they heard about this uh, situation tweeting out there and offering their homes to shelter strangers to make sure that they're safe there were people that were northern africans and probably muslims that were keeping other people safe and saving their lives by being selfless and saying you know i'll put myself in harm's way but you can come into my cellar and you can hide out there i mean this is where humanity actually showed its best side. And I think that is something that's uplifting. And that is something we need to look at, that there are also in every bad news, there is some light and there is some good news. Yeah, I mean, this is really kind of an interesting way to look at it. There was a very famous movie that came out not too long ago, and it was called uh, Silver Linings Playbook. As a matter of fact, you know, the actor was nominated, the actress did win an Oscar, um, and it was about this guy, and uh, you know, really doing some really crazy things in his life, but his idea was to look for the silver lining in everything, you know, to look for the silver lining in everything. How do we get our subconscious mind to help us with that? Because, you know, I don't know about you, but my subconscious mind most of my life, you know, has told me that, you know, I am destined to play small. You know, I am destined to go by the wayside of people that have my history, my family, etc. Well, and that's when the subconscious mind is entangled in old beliefs. And these are the core beliefs that are kind of setting the framework for whatever your subconscious mm -hmm. mind believes it can yeah. do and it's allowed to do. So if you are having the belief of not being good enough, your subconscious will automatically go into survival mode and say, okay, you're not good enough, so let's make sure that you don't make a mess out of your life, <laughs> not too many failures, not too much rejection. So that's, of course, uh, you know, an anxiety or an, a belief that sets you up for anxiety and insecurity. So that's part of the work I'm doing, helping people to change their core beliefs and change their inner identity so that they have more space to actually live how they want to live and how they're meant to live but you know our our subconscious is also a little bit like a truffle pig you know <laughs> it just looks for whatever we tell it to look at so you can teach your subconscious like in that movie to look actually for the positive in the negative for the light at the you know at the darkest places for the silver lining that is something that your subconscious actually will do if you give your subconscious training to do this just like you know i'm teaching people to be their own cheerleaders and really learn to actually self-appreciate themselves on a on a daily basis and uh, and it's amazing when you do this on an ongoing level when you really feel like okay 
everything I'm doing, there is a little voice inside of me that says, good job. Wow, this was amazing. I know this was hard, but you did so well. And, you know, it sounds funny, but it changes your relationship to what it is what you have been doing and certainly changes your relationship to yourself. So looking in this time for things that your subconscious actually can appreciate, that you can actually find uplifting that actually gives you hope and belief in humanity and that what's important to us, your subconscious after maybe one or two weeks of doing this every day will automatically guide you there. I love it. You know, we come and sometimes we think, Dr. Friedman, um, we don't really have the ability to change our lives. We don't have the ability to change our scripts. You know, we don't have the ability to do that. I'm sure you have heard more times than not You know, people say, Dr. Friedman, I have tried everything. I have tried everything. I I can only imagine how many times folks have said that to you. (laughs) It's pretty much 80% of my clientele that exactly say that because they have tried everything and they don't really find that anything is changing. And uh, I just talked to a client today about that, that, uh, you know, he has been struggling with anxiety for almost uh, 10 years and... uh, have tried medication, has tried all different kinds of therapy, and nothing has helped. And uh, and he was literally at the, his rope's end. And and that's something that I think is very important for all of us to understand that this whole idea of anxiety being something we have to get rid of versus something we have to outgrow and heal is just flawed. You know, we have to see that there is something that the anxiety is giving us as information. Now, in this time of where the world appears unsafe, the anxiety that's coming up may on the surface give you information of, well, you know, there can be just an attack happening right here, right now in our city. The world is not safe. I need to hide out. And so there is something inside of us that certainly feels scared. But on a deeper level, the anxiety may also tell you this is the time actually to really get your life back into perspective and make it more meaningful and not waste your time worrying so much about how the garden looks like or what the in-laws are saying or what the IRS has been writing to you, but really putting things into perspective and opening up again and rather than closing down. That's a that's the interesting thing about anxiety. Most people that feel anxious close their heart and feel I need to contract to be safe, whereas the anxiety is actually asking you to do the opposite. It's asking you to look actually in a wider perspective in life. It actually asks you to feel more that you can appreciate the daily blessings, that you can embrace your loved ones, that you can reach out to those that need help. And why that is the case? Because if you try it, if you do all those things, opening up, your anxiety will not be there anymore because you actually will have responded appropriately and not just gone more into that self-protective survival mode that just makes the anxiety only worse. Wow. You know, part of this is what can we do today? How can we take some action? And I love that Dr. Friedman is going to be doing a seminar. We're going to take a short break, everyone, when we come back. Dr. Friedman is going to talk with us about what we can do today, how we can take that step. What is it? that will help us recognize, you know, whether or not the world is unsafe from our perspective. Is it really? And how do we get to the bottom of that? Certainly, for those of you out there, December 5th is going to provide you with that opportunity. We'll be right back. audio was via a Skype call. 
Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Shine on Radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine on Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. The following audio is via a Skype call. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Dr. Friedman Schaub. I want to just mention everybody, Fear and Anxiety. It's a free webinar, Saturdays, uh, December 5th. Uh, just go ahead and go to the website. Uh, the fear and anxiety solution.com uh, and pretty soon we're going to make sure all of you have the link on Facebook for uh, you to just go ahead and sign up and uh, go to the website and check it out it's a brand new website Dr. Friedman has put up uh, for those of you and if you do not have his book the fear and anxiety solution you can also get a copy of it there you can email info info at the fear and anxiety solution.com as well there's so many ways to plug in get yourself some relief because that's what we're talking about today it's you know how do we how do we stay at peace how do we stay in calm or calm centered how do we not as dr friedman child would say how do we not let anxiety and panic dictate our lives now how appropriate we're talking about it for this time of year as well because anxiety and panic generally seeps in somewhere along the way as we get ready for the next five weeks, Dr. Friedman, um, what can we do? Give us a couple tips. You know, first of all, I think we need to get out of the idea that this anxiety either makes us safer or more productive or yeah. better problem solver or better host or any kind of those things, because mm -hmm. it doesn't. It makes the opposite. I mean, we all know that anxiety not only doesn't feel good, but it also reduces your intelligence it really does make your analytical capabilities lower and therefore anxiety is counterproductive 
it doesn't help you to also tap into your intuition. That's almost a block between you and your intuition if you are anxious. And it doesn't help you to be creative and flexible, which often we need, whether it's setting up a, you know, a holiday party or whether it's about going through life and uh, keeping ourselves safe. So let's see very clearly that anxiety isn't really your safekeeper or your bodyguard. And then get motivated to say, okay, how can I actually tap into a more calmness and into a more relaxed place inside of myself to go through even rocky times. And what I find is important is that the thoughts usually start the spiral of anxiety. So just the simple exercise that is so effective that can reduce your anxiety by 50, 60, 70 percent already is to notice your negative thought, the one that always comes up, the one that may start with what if, the one that actually creates this image of overwhelm or unsafety, write that thought down and simply ask yourself, are you sure that this thought is true? Mm. Does this thought really make you feel good? Does this thought help you to reach the goal of a great holiday season or the goal of going safe through the world? And, you know, all of those answers are probably no, it doesn't really help me. It's not true because I don't really know. I'm not a psychic and it doesn't make me feel good. Now, that's where you pull the reins in. That's where you literally tell your subconscious, especially that anxious part of your mind. No, we're not going there. Now, the mind doesn't like to be stopped. It doesn't like stop signs, just like we don't like stop signs. We don't like red lines. So you have to let your mind go again, but you have to guide it into a detour, into another direction, into a positive direction. And so you are basically shedding light on the silver lining on the opposite, and you're bringing out three things that you can tell yourself that are counterbalancing the negative. For example, oh, I know something bad will happen. So you ask three questions. Is this true? Does this thought make me feel good? Does this help me to reach my goals? And then you're going to go through, for example, as counterbalancing, well, right now, I'm okay. Mm. And there have been many times I have been worrying and everything turned out well. And then also remembering I have the strengths and the abilities to be able to handle anything that comes my way. And, and just really having these thoughts and whether you 100% believe in them or not doesn't matter for your mind. It's like a, a soothing bomb. It's like, oh, from this constricted tunnel vision, it all of a sudden has a bigger and wider perspective. And if you do this regularly, come up with more than just three counterbalancing thoughts to those you know, usual suspects that create you uh, or make you feel anxious and insecure, you will feel that your mind becomes calmer and calmer, that these thoughts pop up less and less, which in itself will be a, a huge relief. So, so that is something that I find is very helpful. And then fitting to the holiday season, one of the things that is a, obviously to all of us, the strongest force against anxiety is love. Mm. And this is a time of love. This is a time to open your heart. This is a time to reach out, to embrace those that you care about, to to be together and enjoy each other. Because love, where there is love, there is no anxiety. And uh, when you really love, not just love and immediately think, oh, what if I would lose these people? And you scare yourself. But if you just really love and being present with it, and when you really are open and appreciative, then the moment in itself becomes your reality. That moment in itself gains weight and all these news and information pieces that you have kind of uh, plugged into your mind disappear in that moment because your mind, your subconscious and your conscious mind are fully engaged in the here and now and you will feel safe, you will feel calm and you will feel that you can gain a different perspective on whatever you have been worrying about before. Wow. Dr. Friedman, thank you so much for today. Thank you so very much. Um, again, remind people about the webinar and certainly what a great, great message to end today's show with. 
Well, just uh, go to uh, or send me an email at info at the fear and anxiety solution dot com. The webinar is called Breakthrough Fear and Anxiety. It's on December 5th at 9 a.m. and it will help you, especially during these times, the season, to really feel calm and centered and present so that you can enjoy what's coming and not feel like you have to avoid it or you have to become invisible to somehow make it through. Oh, my gosh. What a powerful message. Dr. Friedman Chaub, everyone. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. And may you enjoy in the gratitude and the love that you have for each other, for the world, and for mostly yourself. We'll see you next time.